Hello friends, Travis here, and I am joined by Carlos and our special guest reviewer, our dog Mika. Mika! <laughs> um, anyway, this is our likes, dislikes, and final thoughts for the Disney Dream Cruise that we just did, what, like a month and a half ago? Um, you'll be seeing this right after the previous vlog, so it'll be all sequential for you. But uh, it's been a couple weeks for us, so we've had to re reconsult our notes and all that stuff. But anyway, it was a good cruise. I really enjoyed it. There were some things that we really loved, and there were some things we didn't like so much. We're going to start with the dislikes, then do the likes, and then we'll close out with some final thoughts. How's that sound? Sounds good. All right. Well, let's go ahead and move right on into it. So for the dislikes, I'm going to start us off because I actually had more to grab about than Carlos did. Um, he was a kid in a candy shop, uh, as they say, on this cruise, um, whereas I was a little bit more critical, but that's okay. Um, Disney is a cruise line that's great, but it's not for everyone, and maybe this video will help you decide how you might feel about it. But for dislike number one, uh, I actually felt like there were some inconsistencies in the app and overall with some of the like events that were happening around the ship. One of the big things was we went to a bar for happy hour and then they told us that it wasn't happy hour, but then the app was saying that it was, and then they were like a little bit hesitant to give us any sort of discounts because they didn't want to get in trouble. And I don't know, um, it made like the kind of bar part of things a little bit weird for us at first. And so then um, after that, when we would see happy hours, we would like confirm before we started ordering and it seemed to be a little bit more consistent in like the pub and other bars but especially at the pool bars um they were confused on that and I think it's because those things change every cruise and um so he showed us on his little list where it said it was an hour later than we were showing in the app um but he did end up honoring the discount for us after a little bit of confusion um, and there were a couple of other small things that happened uh, like that, but um, overall their app was good. I just felt like they could have been a little bit more consistent in how information was presented in the app versus what the crew were told to be doing. Okay, so my dislike is it's not related to anything Disney. <laughs> Yeah, he couldn't even find I a single thing wrong with this cruise. Yeah, I so, couldn't find anything wrong with it. But we so. did have kind of an issue, didn't we, at the end? So it's not Disney related, it's Miami related. <laughs> so just an FYI, like if you're leaving from the port of Miami, you will have a lot of cell phone reception issues at the very end. Um, so you, if you're, let's say, for example, if you're requesting an Uber or a Lyft, um, signal is really really bad um we even um we even requested an uber or i mean not an uber and lyft and he picked us up he made it but the app was frozen so he couldn't track our trip so he dropped us off <laughs> yeah it was so, really weird we were in yeah. the car leaving the cruise port and he just circled back around and dropped us back off because he couldn't get his app to work ours wouldn't sync right um it, it, carlos was having issues i was having issues and apparently our Uber driver, as I mean the Lyft driver as well, so, and we weren't the only ones standing there trying to refresh and get our apps so, to work. So, so cell service in Miami. Yeah, especially there at the port, it's, it's, it's really, really bad. So just an FYI, if you're going to Uber, Lyft, or whatever, ride share, um, be patient. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was fine at like the hotels and other places in yeah. Miami, but just at the cruise port, we really had issues with it. Um, yeah, and it's it's kind of weird because once you get on the ship, your cell phone service is fine. <laughs> it's just interference from I don't know something. It's just there when you're in the docking area or in the yeah, like, receiving and drop off area that the cell phone service is really really bad. So that was my only dislike. Yeah, just because it caused some hiccups for us at the end. Mm -hmm. And then for my last complaint, and Carlos sort of agrees with this, but uh, not as much as I do, I felt like there wasn't a lot of entertainment geared towards kidless adults. There was a lot of family stuff. Carlos will talk about um, some of that in the next section. But um, I felt like, especially being um, LGBTQ-oriented adults, there weren't any meetups, there weren't any single solo traveler meetups, um, things that I'm used to on other cruise lines. Uh, the shows were very kid-oriented, 
and uh, things like that. So um, even the activities on the pool deck and whatever, when we were at Castaway Key, Castaway Key was great for kids, but for adults, if you want to do anything beyond relaxing in a lounger, there's not a whole lot there for you to do, etc. So if you're good at getting in touch with your kid side um, and just kind of rolling with things, then you'll have a good time. But just be aware that there's not going to be a whole lot of like adult only, um, adult oriented, no kids allowed kind of stuff. There are adult only areas on the ship, which is nice. And we did utilize those a few times when the decks were crowded and stuff. But overall, when it comes to entertainment, I think that side of things, and especially the single and solos traveler, LGBTQ traveler uh, stuff was missing in my opinion. All right, enough of that negative Nancy stuff. We'll go ahead and move into the good because there was lots of that. Um, we both had a really good time on this cruise. Uh, I'm not trying to be overly critical or anything, uh, but since it was Carlos's big 40th birthday celebration cruise. I'm glad he had an excellent time and he's going to take over and tell us what his first like was. Ooh, uh, so my first like was like all the, even though we mentioned that there was no adult type of entertainment, there was a lot of entertainment that was really good that I enjoyed, like um, all of the shows. Um, they were really good. They, it's just like Disney puts a good um, a good quality show with the characters and the story and, and all that stuff. So that was one of my favorite was the shows. I definitely thought that the theater shows, the main theater productions got progressively better throughout the week. And that last show was super good with the genie and all that. It was so much yeah, fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, Another thing that, that I liked a lot is they actually have mo uh, movie theater in the, on the ship. And then it's like just going to the movies. They have like a snack bar with popcorn, drinks and everything. So... Um, you can get whatever you want. So that was always, uh, that was fun. Uh, we went to go watch Hocus Pocus 2 while we were on the ship. Yeah, well, Hocus Pocus and Hocus Pocus yeah, 2. So um, was, in the same day, we kind of watched them back to back a little bit. Yeah, so that was a lot of fun. It and, was a Halloween crew, so it made sense. <laughs> um, another thing was the Aqueduct. That was a lot of fun. Um, it's a water coaster within the ship. Definitely packs uh, a punch, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it does. So it's a, it's a lot of fun. And they let two adults ride, so it was awesome. Yeah, they told us there was no weight limit or anything. No. We got on there and we were just zipping through there so fast. <laughs> so so that was fun. And then the fireworks at sea at night, yeah. um, that was really, really amazing. Um, it's definitely a very unique experience since Disney's the only uh, cruise line that, that does it out at sea. Yeah, so activities, mm -hmm. very strong uh, bullet point um, for sure. Now let's talk about what I liked. Um, there, Like I said, there were several things that I liked, but the one thing that I want to talk about specifically, and this just happened to be kind of luck of the draw for us, is that our cruise wasn't fully booked. Um, we had about, I would say maybe 60%, 70% at most uh, capacity. So uh, I know Disney's actually still limiting capacity a little bit, so uh, hopefully they'll keep that because it was really nice not to have to wait in line for things and to have deck chairs available almost all the time and not have to fight, you know, people uh, for that. And um, the buffet wasn't ever overly crowded. We could always find a table, things like that. Uh, I really enjoyed the number of guests on board to the size and ratio of the guest spaces and crew members and whatever. Uh, I've been on cruises that were a little bit crowded and had a hard time getting a bartender to notice me, things like that. That was not an issue for us on this cruise. As a matter of fact, we turned bartenders away a couple times uh, because we weren't wanting drinks at that moment, um, which is always a good problem to have too much attention, um, you know, which obviously I crave attention um, all the time. So um, notice me, everyone, no, I'm just kidding. Mm. Um, but yeah, so that made for a much smoother, much better overall experience for us and our first Disney cruise. So the next thing I liked about the Disney cruise was the rotational dining. Um, so every night we rotated to a different, um, themed, um, area, uh, which included, well, the theme and then the food was different. So, and then another cool thing is that we were assigned like, uh, what do you call it? A waiter? No. Yeah, and I was a waiter, a head waiter, and they followed us to all the different dining rooms. So uh, they, we got to know them. They got to know us. So um, it was it was it was a good good time. And they were really great. Yeah, uh, they were they're super team nice. Of, yeah, of wait staff. That some of the best um, probably I've ever had. They were very um, attentive. They told us what was happening, what was gonna 
like um, for breakfast in the morning if we wanted to and stuff like that. Yeah, they were good about giving us information. They seemed to genuinely care how our day went, what we did, um, all those things. Yeah, very, very good weight stuff. The rotational dining thing is cool. On the Disney Dream, you go from, um, what was it the first day, the Royal Palace, and then we went to Animator's Palette, and then we went to Enchanted Garden, and then rotated back through um, we only went to Enchanted Garden once, but we went to the other two twice, and so, yeah. But it's cool that your wait staff goes with you, because then, you, like, you're not having to get to know a new set of people every night. Um, and, uh, also, as a note, we were table 69, so that <laughs> yeah, was pretty true. interesting. <laughs> I don't know what that means exactly, oh, but 69 might have some significance to some people, depending on their lifestyle. But yeah, so that's it for the dislikes and the likes. Um, so yeah, for our last section, we'll go ahead and give our final thoughts. Um, I'll start this off and then Carlos can close out the video and see if he remembers all the outro stuff. I try to get him to do this every time and he can never remember, but that's okay. Um, so for my, my final thoughts, uh, for our first Disney cruise, it was a good one. We had a good time. I think there were things that were better than I was expecting. Some things weren't as good as I was expecting, but overall we had a good time. My biggest issue with Disney is it's a lot more expensive than other cruise lines, and I'm not sure for me personally, I'm getting the value part of it. Like, is it worth that much more? Are you getting more in your cruise fare, in your experience than you would on, an, on another cruise line? And um, the answer is yes to some extent, but is it worth almost double the price? I don't know. We will go on Disney again, try it out again on the different ships and stuff and, and see you know, definitely looking for deals and things because um, it's pricey. But um, Disney definitely has tried and true methods. Their processes are very um, streamlined. They know what they're doing. They know how to handle large amounts of guests and that guest experience stuff to the, is very important to them. And you could see that in the way that they operated from sending the luggage tags in the mail and um, the, the welcome letters and the way you were treated uh, when you go through embarkation and on board and disembarking the ship and all that. Um, very, very good, high quality experience overall. I guess my final thoughts is yes, I, I enjoyed Disney a lot. Um, I'm a Disney fan, I guess you can say. <laughs> uh, so I, like you said, we would definitely be on another Disney cruise, hopefully on the Disney Wish, which is their newest ship. Um, so I overall, I recommend it, kids or no kids, <laughs> um, definitely um, go and experience it. Um, it is a little bit more expensive, but, but uh, it's not something that you're going to do every other month. Um, maybe every two years or so, take a, a nice uh, cruise with Disney. Um, and um, those are my... My overall is very... Overall, he loved it. I loved it. Overall, I had a lot of fun. Overall, for me, it was okay. <laughs> um, and I think Mika has probably an opinion, too. She says she doesn't like it when we're gone, so stop going on cruises. That's um, true. <laughs> but anyway. That's it. I want to thank you all for watching. Um, please subscribe. Be sure to like, comment, oh. share, subscribe. All those fun things. <laughs> we'll talk soon. And you all have a good night. Bye, guys.